You see, the thing is, on a small scale, the consequences of doing something different and failing might not be that bad. Like choosing the poached cuttlefish. Oh, no. But what if you're doing something as big as building a house? With its beautiful location and cosmopolitan character, it's no wonder that Tamaki Makoro, Auckland, is commonly ranked in the world's most livable cities. People come from all over to live here, including Englishman Tony Hodge. I came here when I was 22 and spent a year here with my wife and my firstborn. And I always wanted to come back to New Zealand because I really thought it was a great place to bring up your kids. And New Zealand's great for that. You keep their children younger over here. You know, you see four-year-olds walking to school with a backpack without their parents. You know, you wouldn't be doing that in, in my town. You get dragged up pretty quick in the UK. With his enterprising attitude, Tony's prospered in Auckland and has built up a business cladding new build houses. Morning, guys. They got the glue on, which is good. Be done by lunchtime. There's quite a bit of speciality to it. You need to know certain things that a lot of people don't. But I wouldn't say it's rocket science. <laughs> Tony's a busy man. But when he's not, he takes every opportunity to catch up with daughter Chelsea. How's Izzy? Yeah, good. Is she settled down? Yeah, settling in really well. That's we good. We let her off the lead for the first time, and she went running around us on the beach. She came so. back? Yeah. <laughs> Which is always a worry, right? <laughs> it's a greyhound. It's a million miles an hour. Gone, she's gone. <laughs> Dad and I are super close. We've never argued anything, ever. Don't make me we? sound like a princess. You are no. a princess. <laughs> she is a princess. I've ne we've never had an argument. Have we? <laughs> have we? And it's just as well they get on, because Tony and Chelsea have plans to move and enjoy a more relaxed lifestyle, a quick ferry ride away from downtown Auckland on Waiheke Island. I went over there and spent a day with a real estate agent, and it was the last section I looked at, and I just said, yeah, I'll buy it. I'll have that one. That was it. At the time of doing that, that section next door become available. And I rang Chelsea and her partner and said, this section's available. I think you should probably buy this one because it's a good investment. And they did. So we ended up having been, we've been neighbours. Yeah, it was a great opportunity. And while Chelsea and her partner are still some way off planning their house on Waiheke, Tony's starting now. We own the section for a few years now. We decided now's the time to go. It's got to be done now. I need a project. When the time is right, we'll definitely build next door um, and use Dad's driveway to help us in the process. <laughs> Probably not, but that's what she hopes to. Tony has big plans for his section here at Rocky Bay on Waiheke. A bespoke dream home, a world away from the standard subdivision builds he's used to cladding. Oh, this is beautiful, isn't it? A lovely quiet lane, some native bush, a bird song, classic white hickey. Tony, hey, how are you? Very good, sir. Nice to meet you. You too. What do you think? Look at that. I wasn't expecting that. No, neither was I when I bought the section because it was full of trees and you had no idea that that was out there. What a slope. A very, yeah, very wow. steep section. Um, how do you even get down there? Um, probably not down there because there's a good chance you will fall over. So we can go round via the neighbour? Well, let's right, do that, sure. yeah. Sounds better. Oh, this is uh, a little precarious. Yeah, you'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? So we're building a house out of shipping containers. So a little bit unusual. Indeed. A little bit different from the average plan of a house. And it looks like a complex container house here. You're not just bringing one in, are you? Seven containers in total, five 20-foot ones and two 10-foots. I suspect from what you're describing here, there might be a few complications along the way. Not a very standard build, we would say. No. Yeah. No, yes. it's a little bit more involved than the average house. On Tony's very steep site, a driveway allows valuable off-street parking, and retaining walls provide structure and stability. At the bottom of the build, the first container stands alone as a basement workshop. Next are containers two and three, 
part of a wall of Container 2 will be cut out and a window added for the master bedroom. Container 3 will house the ensuite bathroom and a guest bathroom because Container 4 comes in here too, connecting on the angle as the guest bedroom. Up the internal stairs are containers 5, 6 and 7, placed around a floating concrete floor with the front door at one end. These modified containers house the kitchen, an office and lounge facing that magnificent view with extensive decking offering outdoor living next to a rooftop garden of native plants. The exterior is a mix of cedar cladding and exposed steel, so the house will retain the industrial look of its original components, ordinary shipping containers. Your experience with construction, so why containers? I just love the idea of doing something different. Most people thought I was crazy trying to build a house out of containers, and especially with the uh, steepness of the sections, as you can imagine, the challenge will be getting the things down here. Yeah, how do you do that? It's a long way up, and that is going to prove the biggest problem, I think. How long is it going to be till this is all finished? I don't know. I think the building I've discussed that we probably might take six months. One of the things is when you're on an island is everything has to come from over the water, that's it. So you're, you're beholden to deliveries, mm. you know, availability, everything. So here's the big question. How much is this going to cost you? Oh, the big question. I have no idea. I honestly have no idea. Even, even the builder has... No, well, we've, we've, we bandy around ballpark figures and I don't think any of them will, any of them will be right. So I'm going to take a guess. I think you're going to do well to do this for six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. So I'll take that. Maybe you can take we'll whatever see you want. How we you, go. you can take it whichever way you want. Yeah, I, I hope you're right. That'd be lovely. This is a bold, brave, and unusual way of building, and I really admire that. But does Tony fully appreciate what he's taking on here? Neither he nor his builder nor his architect have ever built a container home before. This is going to be a journey of discovery every single steep step of the way. I'm puzzled though. Why containers? Is it because Tony thinks they'll be easier and quicker to build with, and therefore cheaper? I don't know. And Tony's not really saying. So let's ask his architect, Waiheke-based Chris McCarthy. He wanted to do something that was right outside the box. Different in a way that created a, a novel aesthetic. There's no manual for how to turn a container into a house. It's not part of our normal building standards. We've got container resting on container with another container resting on this container. And all of these guys have got to get delivered and settled on site with quite a high degree of accuracy and then be welded together. But when you start to cut holes in them to put doors and windows and when you want to insulate them to make them comfortable and when you need to run cabling through them, they're actually not that easy to work with. It's not a shortcut to anything. There's no shortcut for a 100 tonne crane either. And getting it to Tony's section has been like a military operation. We've got three containers coming in today, which is the ground floor of the house. And this is the first stage, and I think it's about two or three weeks' time we get the next lot coming. So the first time having the crane out on the island for me, and quite a big day, you know, a bit of a make sure this all goes off to plan. Originally, Tony planned to take the containers down the neighbour's driveway, but they're simply too big and unwieldy. There's no choice but to crane them in from the road. Coming up on the hook, nice and easy. Coming up. It's going so far out. I never thought it would be this hard. <laughs> I, never, I never did, honestly. I never thought it would be this hard. I honestly thought that thought this type of line with a high up on the back would be able to go down the new driveway and then lift it into place with that. But because they all got to put their legs out, they've become the problem. Because it's cost a fortune for this today. Keep coming up. Three, two, one, plenty of height. Needless to say, once a multi ton container is put in position, it's not easy to move. The whole operation could come unstuck right here. 30 mil, hold it there. 
Everything needs to be perfect the first time round, and that way on our repeat visits, it can continue to be perfect and whole. Well done, chaps. Good job. Plain sailing, I think. The builders got something to get their teeth into now. But we should get over the next few weeks see a lot of change going on down here. Shipping containers, hulking great steel packing boxes that crossed fast oceans to deliver cashew nuts from the Ivory Coast, Rubik's cubes from Hungary and everything else in between. They really are a modern marvel of globalized logistics. But that's not all. Nowadays, they crop up as garden sheds, pop-up coffee bars, construction site offices, and on the rare occasion, as proper houses. I say rare because even though container houses are high profile, they're actually still a very unusual way of building a house. And it's that opportunity to do something different that drives Tony Hodge and his build on Waiheke Island. And another load of containers are on their way to site today. This steep section on the one narrow access road down to Rocky Bay has attracted a lot of attention since the build began three weeks ago. So far, careful planning has minimized any potential disruption and locals are intrigued rather than inconvenienced. Everybody around here is, yeah, they're all guessing what's it going to be like. <laughs> because the, the, everywhere through here, your, your access is terrible. So, so to put a, a building here as well, wow, it's, it's a feat. It's amazing. Because you don't know what the end story is going to be like. See, see it start off with just with a couple of containers, then another couple are added, and then more, and it's like a jigsaw, but now it's so the shoe still don't know what the, the end's going to be like. It's quite intriguing. Yeah, I'd be keen to see the end of this, believe me. Forgotten just how steep this site was. Oh, and look, there's almost a house, a few extra containers. Things are really moving on at pace. Here he is. Hey, Tom. How are you all right? Good, mate. Good Look at you. this. A lot of difference since the last time you were here, Tom, yes. Yeah. Yeah, coming on quite well. You seem excited. I'm very excited, yeah. yeah it's, it's good to see. It's good to see the change. And so immediate. I think it looks immediate just to drop a container in. The work that goes on it after that is the bit that takes the time. That's the bit where you sort of like, you, when we first dropped them in, it just looked like three containers. But yeah. now it's start looking, it's taking shape so people can get an idea of what it might look like. There's not much left of this container here. No, and they'll be the same, unfortunately. That's part of the process of building the containers. They're not quite wide enough to make rooms out of on their own. So unless you put them together, which we're not, you have to open them up. So still happy that you're building with containers? Still a great idea to use a container, absolutely. I can see already Tony's not going to compromise on what he wants. And if that means he has to cut even more into the containers, then he will. And he is. Yeah, there's going to be a window going that end to a little bit of light in from that side. Um, and then obviously this one cuts out a big hole here. Eventually, that goes gone. Yeah, so you wouldn't call it easy. <laughs> no, you haven't chosen the easy route. No, definitely not. It needs to come to me a touch. Clearly, the more you cut out of a steel container, the weaker it's going to be. Okay, coming up. But that's not the only concern. What's all this going to end up looking like? So that's the last one. Yeah, the last one. And once you're down, 
That's it, mate. That's it. Roger's down is down. No going back. Good. Good. Happy. Down off. So let's just take a step back and re-examine exactly how this container house is being put together. Here's a lovely model of Tony's house. You've got the angled roof, the deck, and those containers stacked up on the hillside. But the most revealing thing about this model is when you begin to unpick it. You see, you begin to understand exactly what's happening to those containers, which start out like this, simple complete, structurally efficient entity. And in this house, the containers are skewed and cut and diminished to such an extent that you begin to wonder what the advantage of using those containers is in the first place. As I've said before, building a complete house out of shipping containers is not that common in New Zealand. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure modifying the containers as much as Tony's doing is actually going to change that. To see what's considered a conceptually pure container house, I've come to the south coast of Wellington. This container house at Orfiro Bay on Wellington's south coast was designed by its former owner, Ross Stevens. Not an architect, but a very clever industrial designer. And as you can see, it's hard to miss. It's not a polite house, is it? In fact, it's quite confronting. There's no nod to beautification or fine detailing here. It is what it is, three containers stacked on top of each other on a hillside. But and there's a bit of glass in the end there, a couple of windows, and that suggests that there's more to discover here. I'm certainly keen to, and, and also to get out of this wind. Oh, what a difference. Look at this space. Ross has made a totally different environment between the cliff and those containers. And all around, reclaimed industrial materials. You know, straight away, there's no mistaking that you're not in a normal house. But the raw container panels here, and that's been filled in with concrete. Have you ever seen a floor like that before? I certainly haven't. While Tony has cut out and extended the width of his containers with timber framing, you'll see no such thing here. The rooms are narrow, yes, but the design works within those constraints to deliver a cohesive, convincing house. This place is a great example of how to build a container house. The core logic of the container is respected and the compromises are dealt with really skillfully. I mean, this place is still stackable. You could add five extra stories there tomorrow. But for me, the greatest thing about this place is that all the other elements here amplify that reclaimed industrial theme set by the container. Now, Tony's house, on the other hand, is an entirely different animal. By ignoring some of that container logic, my fear is that his version of a container house will not nearly be as successful as this one. I guess only time will tell. On Waiheke, all the modifications to Tony's containers are already causing issues for the builders. Give you an indication to how far out it is? Quite a bit. Shows you how much flex there is in these containers, though. Mm. Right, do you want to hook that strap up? Bring that over a bit. Another one. Another click. Another click. One more. When you try to hang the door, it'll be out of, out of plumb, and then when you open the door, the door will hit the floor. We were quite surprised at how bad they were. It's lost all its structural integrity. These structural issues are turning into a major problem. One Tony admits he didn't see coming. You just, just assume they would hold their rigidity, but I mean, look how much we've cut out of this. We've got no end, no side, and half a roof. So there's not a lot left of it, is there, really? 
I still like guess that could happen. I didn't think it'd be as bad as it was, to be honest with you. But once you start, I mean, we've got, you know, four containers in there, one, two, three, four, with no side left in them. We're taking the whole sides out. People must think, what is this nut idiot doing? Even the valuer came out in the bank this week and he said, so when are the containers going? He had the plans. He had the plan said that said, the container house all over it. And he said, when are the containers going? I mean, really, come on. Tony readily admits he's not the most patient of guys at the best of times. And these are far from those. One person watching developments very closely is Tony's daughter Chelsea. One day she'll build her own house on her section right next door. But for now, she's the sounding board for her dad's frustrations. Dad building a container house on a cliff. <laughs> um, yeah, to be honest, I don't know why he picked that idea. Some people will call him crazy, but I think he's been in that industry for so long that doing something different is so exciting and brings an extra level of challenge to it as well. It's hard when a project of yours does go off track or it does get delayed or things change beyond your control. Um, so it is obviously frustrating, but I just really tell him that so many things are beyond his control and he needs to trust the process. He has to be patient and the house will be beautiful and he'll love the end result uh, once it's finished. It'll be so nice to have a base there. I think the idea of waking up in the morning and being able to throw open the doors and be out on the deck up amongst the trees and all the native birds will be beautiful. And yeah, it's really that view as well. <laughs> Seeing that view when you come down the driveway towards the house is just um, so special.
but all the recent delays and frustrations could soon fade into insignificance. Before the concrete pour for the top floor slab, the engineering company wants to check the beam supporting it. Did you have a detail for like the joist to the steel? Typically, this wouldn't be much of a concern for your average timber build, but this is no ordinary house. It's seven heavy containers stacked in differing positions on the side of a cliff, and no engineer wants to take any chances of it all going wrong. Did you just, like, sight weld the maximum stuff? Yeah. yeah. So there's a bit of an issue here. These edge beams, the slab here and here, are connected with a series of individual blocks at every bolt center. The engineer wants a continuous piece of timber between the steel beam and the container. The problem is you can't really undo that, and they can't pull the slab until the engineer's signed off on these beams. Not only does Tony have to pay for all the extra work and materials, the site's effectively closed down till it's done. Understandably, he's less than impressed, and Chelsea has to talk him down from yet another cliff. Do the builders have anything to do at the moment? Not really. Everything goes on and hold until that floor goes down. I guess you're just going to have to learn to be patient and let it run its course. Highly unlikely that I'll learn to be patient at my age, <laughs> but it could be another month before that goes down. Do you think we'll be in by summer? I hope we're in by summer, because we have got Christmas dinner books <laughs> for this year. Yeah. I guess he's a little bit stressed about it. He likes to know everything, what's happening and in what order, and have that control over it. But he's learning to be patient, I think, throughout this process. I think I'm definitely there for him to vent about it, I'd say that. <laughs>
I'm thinking, but... Well, we would slightly differ in some of our tastes, but uh, I'm sure we'll meet somewhere in the middle and get the, get the end result that's needed to be done. I'm a bit more traditional compared to you. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, probably. I would say I was traditional as well, but I think no, it's not. just you're a little bit quirky with this house, aren't you? I mean, it's your house. <laughs>
and open up to nature every morning. Very nice. Listen to the native birds singing. Embrace nature. Embracing the island well, life. That's you all over, is it? I think so. Or it will be. It will be. After all the trials and tribulations of this build, Tony may indeed want to go bush. The thing is, though, with this haven, you wouldn't even have to leave the house. This project has always been about Tony creating something different. And we've seen that through the processes. It's been different. It's been difficult. I just hope that with the final stages, with the finishing, the fit out, that it hasn't become normalized in any way and that Tony gets the home that he always wanted. Ah, oh, now, there it is. What a striking house. I love it. Hello, Tom. Tony. Nice to see you again. How are you? Yeah, good, great you. to see you. This is an impactful house, isn't it? Sort of brooding presence amongst this soft green. Real impact. You'd like to come and have a look? I'd love to. Come on in. Tony, what a difference in here. It's soft and welcoming and uplifting, you'd have to say. It's a real surprise. You can see the containers, but that doesn't dominate. No, that was the general idea, right? So it doesn't yeah. feel like you're actually in a container yeah. per se. And then this goalpost, which delineates that space. I wasn't sure about that. Very important, that top cord. Oh, yeah? So that's uh, very structural, holds the uh, two ends of the containers. If you take that out, then the ends would start flopping in. So that has ah. to stay there. So that's part of the design. I know it's a funny detail, but I love that. Yeah, very clever. So, into a container now, or what's left of it. The kitchen. Yeah, but you can really read the dimensions here, can't you? The, the width, just about wide enough. It doesn't need to be a great big kitchen for the size of the house, and I think it's practical and it works enough for, for a man like myself who doesn't cook much. But I'm really pleased to see that you still get the sense of container. And I love the fact that you've left this ceiling exposed. There's no hiding it with jib. Yeah, we want to try and keep that so we can still see some container. Yeah. Otherwise, you could be in any room if you didn't have that up there. I think Tony's been quite astute with the black and white aesthetic. It continues the industrial feel of the house while providing a supportive backdrop to the Scandinavian-style timber and a strong contrast to the soft greens outside and in. You've got this slot down there which has a great window in it. Lovely tree behind, just all trunk. Yep, straight out onto nature. Yeah, yeah, it's a sort of zen view and you get that in lots of different places here. You know, all these little pockets of tree and sky and the sea, very well composed. Thank you. At 110 square metres, it's a small house, but clever spatial design makes it feel much bigger, especially the spaces created in between the containers. And of course, ensuring that huge view is given pride of place. Tony has also somehow made room up here for a small office. But with that intoxicating outlook, I'm not sure how much work he's actually going to get done. Ah, oh, lovely ply treads here. And I love these. The original tie down to the container. Yeah, we left them on. You can see them top and bottom. Yeah. This is two containers, right? Yeah, but halfway between two. So this is the lower container, and that's the upper container. The private spaces downstairs are formed from three containers. One is the guest bedroom, while the other two combine to house the guest bathroom and Tony's master bedroom and ensuite. There's plenty of nice dappled light down here too, and the bush is almost within reach. 
However, it's the upstairs deck that takes hovering over the landscape to a whole new level. It could well be Tony's daughter Chelsea's favorite space. And since she and her husband have plans to build on their own section next door, she may well soon have one of her own. This is a roof garden. Beautiful. It's living. I hope it'll grow a bit bigger than that, actually. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a start. Did you have anything to do with this, Chelsea? Uh, Did no, you help? No? Nothing. I can't keep a single plant alive, so that area was not for me. <laughs> but you had a great impact in other areas here. Yeah, helped dead where needed for the inside and the interiors, yeah. But did he listen? Of course. Partly. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> not always. Yeah, yeah. Dad should be so proud of the end result. It must get you excited about the section next door. Ah, uh, yes and no. Um, yeah. <laughs> definitely not anytime soon after that. Right. <laughs> Right from the very start, Tony said he wanted to build a house from containers because he wanted to do something different. And now it's abundantly clear what he meant. This is not a house that showcases the structural properties of containers. It's one that celebrates their aesthetic qualities. So Tony, you're finished. How do you feel? Pretty good now, actually. I'm glad we got to the end. I'll probably won't do it again, so that, yeah. um, that's a, a good way of putting it. So during the process, were there times where you thought, this is too much, I've made the wrong choice? Uh, no, not at all, I don't think. It was, it was always had to be a container house. That, that was it. I was, I was, I would never be moved from that. Never, you'll never sway me from that. I'm sure there were moments that the builder had said that he wished he hadn't done it. Well, good on him for finishing. Yeah, I think all good builders do. It's more than just a house. It's more like an art form to me now. You know, I spent so long looking at it yeah. that now it's complete. I'm happy with what I've achieved. Now, cost. Tony originally told me he had no idea. I estimated $650,000. So? Where are you now? Do you know how much it cost you? Yeah, I think we've got to around about $800,000 so far. I, I think that's pretty good. I was sure you were going to say something with a million at the beginning. I would have loved to have done it for less, but... Course. At the end of the day, you have to spend what you have to spend to get the house finished, otherwise it's a, it's a waste of time. Well, I'm incredibly impressed with this place, so I'm sure you will enjoy the benefits of your hard work, frustrations, all of that, Thank and you. from here on, plain sailing, I think. Yeah, hopefully. Initially, I have to say, I was a bit skeptical about this house. I felt like it was missing the point. It doesn't follow the logic of a normal container build but it seems like I was looking at it in entirely the wrong way. Tony hasn't been constrained by the containers. Instead, this house celebrates everything you can do with a container. And in doing so, has created a compact building of great complexity, a real pleasure to experience, and something of considerable